Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I would like to wish my viewers a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Welcome back to the Road to AWS series and in today's episode of Road to AWS, we will jump into the much awaited service that is AWS EC2. We will discuss about the AWS security groups and we will have a hands-on demo on how to create an EC2 instance and lots more. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right in. But before jumping into the EC2 part, first let's understand why there was a need for such a thing called EC2 or Elastic Compute in today's time. So let's suppose I'm a software developer or a game designer or I work for industrial machine designing. The workload and the compute power needed to perform these various tasks uh, would differ from person to person and profession to profession. So, so if I take an example of a simple computational configuration, I would have a generously powered CPU and GPU for my storage needs, a moderately sized hard drive like one terabyte or so. RAM, I would have around eight gigabyte and ethernet and Wi-Fi for my connectivity to the internet and a generally activated operating system. All of which would be an on-premise computation powerhouse for my needs. But what if with time it needs an upgrade for it to meet the changing market? I would have to replace the older hardware with the newer ones, which would cost me too much and it wouldn't be practical solution as well. This is the reason why after so many advancements and having an idea of making life easier, there was a need to have a sort of facility which could cope up with the ever changing needs and upgrade in configuration. And that's where EC2 came into the picture. So Amazon Elastic Cloud Compute or Amazon EC2 is a web service that provides secure resizable compute capacity in the cloud. The point that we should remember and most of the time we get confused is that Amazon EC2 is not itself a computing instance. It's a service that provisions a computing environment with all the different flavors of configuration it has. It provides a means to choose the type of instance that meets our needs. So that's something that we need to understand clearly. So it is designed to make web scale cloud computing easier for developers. It helps us use or rent a virtual machine that is the EC2 or the Elastic Compute Cloud. We can as well store our data on the virtual drives or the Elastic Block Stores or EBS that we call them. Uh, we are let free of the burden of managing the traffic and the load as it does it for us with ELB or the Elastic Load Balancers. And the most important thing that we have and the most important thing it helps us with, it helps scale the instance when the demand increases using the auto scaling groups. Moving on. So these are really important for the exam. So please try to remember them very carefully. And uh, what are some of the major features that are uh, provided by Amazon EC2? So the first feature that Amazon EC2 provides is basically you get a pre-configured templated Amazon machine image, that's an AMI. And AMI provides the information that is required to launch an instance. So if you have used a Docker image before, you would know that an image is essentially built from the instructions from a complete and executable version of an application. So you run the image to start an instance of it and it's like a blueprint for you to start a particular application. You have all the configurations ready in a particular place. You create the image. Whenever you want the application to be deployed, you just run the image and create the instance for yourself. So it can help you configure security and network access on your EC2 instance. Uh, you can choose what type of instance you want. And the best part is you can spin off, terminate and monitor as many instances as you want from the AMI. Uh, you can run your instances in multiple availability zones, make use of static IPs, attach a persistent storage to ensure your data is secure even if you terminate the instance. And the most important aspect of EC2 and the most eye-catching feature is that you pay for only the resources you consume as it's a pay-as-you-go facility. That's something that everyone needs to understand. So let's move on. Yeah, if you need to spin off an EC2 instance, you need to understand the basics of AWS EC2 pricing model. And that's what we are going to learn now. That's one of the most precious to all the developers here uh, who are going to learn this tutorial. This is the first one that we have here is the free tier pricing uh, that we will be using for the rest of the tutorial series. The free tier model provides us with 750 hours of Linux and Windows T2 in micro instances, which replenishes each month for one year. So this is the best model if you want to get a hands on with the AWS infrastructure and you want to use them. So I'm sure you have seen the video where I've explained on how to create a free tier account. 
link is on the top right corner above please check that and come back to this page again if you haven't already so the next one that we have here is the on demand instance an on demand instance is an instance that you use on demand it's pretty simple isn't it <laughs> but we will be discussing more about this so you have full control over its life cycle you decide when to launch stop hibernate start reboot or terminate it you pay only for the hours that you uh, you pay only for the hours that your on demand instance are is in the running state so you pay only for the hours that your on demand instance is in the running state there is no long term commitment required when you purchase on demand instances these instances are usual for application testing or web service testing or initial deployment of uh, the product to test the product and to test the traffic based on which you may decide how to scale it in the future that's how on demand instances work so let's move on then so the next one is a spot instance so if you are ready for some gamble and you are working on processing some data that doesn't depend on the consistent availability of the instance and you want something real cheap cheaper than the on demand like 90% cheap go for the spot instance a spot instance is an unused ec2 instance that is available for less than the price of an on demand instance it's per hour instance bid so it's basically you bid for an hour for that particular price to be available for the ec2 for the spot instance to be available so the hourly price for a spot instance is called a spot price so uh, what happens here is spot instance are a cost effective choice if you can be flexible about when your application runs and if your application can be interrupted or not you can choose a spot instance and the availability zone that you want to run uh, then you just need to basically choose the interruption point that you have like terminate or reboot or shut down and then you can just launch and scale the application only works if your bid exceeds the spot price then only you get to use it but be careful on your data while using the spot instances because it may leave you at any point of time so moving on the next one that we have is the reserved instances so reserved instances are like on demand instances but they offer 75% discount compared to on demand instances so if you but only if you avail the savings plan so what happens here is with savings plan you make a commitment to a consistent usage amount measured in us dollars per hour so this provides you a flexibility to use the instance configuration that best meets your needs and you continue to save money instead of making a commitment to a specific instance configuration so as i have stated in the example that if we commit to using ec2 instance over a period of one or three years term uh, it will give us a considerable amount of cost reduction compared to the usual on demand instance so that's how it works but on the other hand an amazon ec2 dedicated host is a physical server with ec2 instance capacity fully dedicated to your use so if so it's a physical server in a specified region that you make use and spin your instance so the major difference between the dedicated host and a dedicated instance is that dedicated hosts allow you to consistently deploy your instance to a same physical server over time unlike dedicated instances where you pay for every instance you spin so here you pay for the host itself not for the instances that you spin so the next thing that we want to discuss is the aws instance types with the ever growing demand for computational power aws has made it simple for the users to choose from its vast collection of aws ec2 instance types as to what suits your current need so we will cover these as fast as possible but we need to have an overview on what they are and how to remember them so here as you can see i have listed down the most important ones starting off with a general purpose instance which is basically a combination of balanced compute and memory and networking capabilities and compute optimized which zones to high performance processes then it moves to the memory optimized which is used for instances which need to process large set of data in memory and excel Accelerated computing leans towards the heavy image and graphic processing side of the instance, which uses much of the GPU than the CPU, like our compute optimized instances do. And the storage optimized, on the other hand, provides a pool of solid state bulk storage where IOPS is major priority while reading and writing data on the local storages. So mostly dealing with data processing and big data analysis like SAP HANA. Uh, but these are too overwhelming, isn't it? Let us just simplify this yes so this looks much more we have general purpose the m actually the m family provides a balance of compute memory and network resources small and mid-sized databases data processing tasks that require additional memory can use this type of general purpose instances the t that you have here the t instance is a burstable performance instance that provide a baseline level of cpu performance with the ability to burst over a baseline so burst here means uh, that if there is a surge uh, then the t instances have the capability to spike and increase their operating capacity to meet the requirement without incurring any additional charge 
then we move on to the compute optimize so c the families the c family instances are ideal for compute bound application that benefit from high performance process like high performance web servers scientific modeling batch processing distributed analytics and and if you are into gaming you can also create a highly scalable multiplayer gaming server using a c instance the next one that we have is a storage optimized storage optimized on the other hand provides a pool of solid state bulk storage where IOPS is the major priority that I've already mentioned. So these instances are optimized to deliver tens and thousands of low latency random IO operations per second, that's IOPS, to applications, mostly used for data warehousing, elastic surgeon and analytics. And the accelerated optimized or the GPU optimized, as I've already mentioned, accelerated or GPU optimized uh, computing actually leans towards the heavy image and graphic processing side of the instances, which uses much of the GPU than the CPU like our compute optimized instances are. So if you are into Maya, AutoCAD, Blender Pro or machine learning or deep learning, this is the right fit, but it's expensive nonetheless. The next one is the memory optimized. Memory optimized instances are designed to deliver fast performance for workloads that process large data sets in memory. So mostly preferred for high performance databases and data mining and analysis and for in-memory databases. They use high capacity RAM. We should remember that. So they use high capacity RAMs. How to remember these types? So the first thing that we have here is the general purpose. General purpose instances provide a balance of compute memory and networking resources. Now, I think you have already got that in your head. So there are several type of instances within the general purpose that we have. So how to remember them? So the first one that you see here, A1. A1 basically stands for A as in ARM. You must remember that A is ARM. So which is custom built for AWS Graviton processes. T as in tiny or turbo, which, uh, which are the burstable general purpose instance types. And T3A, whenever a A comes, for any of the instance types, you must remember that it has a AMD EPYC series, EPYC 7000 series processor. So T3A, A means AMD, EPYC 7000 series processor. And the T2, T2 basically is a free tier. You must remember T2 means free tier. And M6G, M6G, you must remember it has like, it has 64 bit ARM core on the Graviton 2 processor. So six, you can take it from the 64 bit G from the Graviton 2 processor. So whenever you, anyone asks you about M6G, you can remember that M is like the uh, general purpose medium uh, instance, which has 64 bit ARM core and which works on the Graviton 2 processor. M5 or M4, you know that M stands for medium and M5A. M5A, as I told you earlier, the T3A, A stands for AMD, similar to this. M5 also has M5 with AMD EPYC 7000 series processor. So you need to remember in that way. So one new thing that you're going to see in the next one is M5N. M5N, whenever N comes, you need to remember that it has network. Actually, network is its forte for that particular instance. So 100 GPS or network bandwidth on the largest instance size. So they have been segregated that way. So ultimately you need to remember that A is for ARM, T is for tiny or turbo, M is for medium and N for network. So the next thing that we want to remember is the compute optimized. So C is for compute. You must remember like C5 and C4 are the two instances. So C stands for compute and C5N as I already told you is for network. So when someone t tells you about C5N, you can tell that they are 100 Gbps. They are more efficient when it compared to networking compared to the C5 ones. The memory optimized. Memory optimized instances are designed to deliver fast performance for workloads that process large data sets in memory. So these have a lot of instances. So we need to remember them very carefully. So R5 or R4. So whenever you see R, you must remember that it stands for RAM or random access memory. And R5, when you see R5, you must uh, correlate to as it gives 5% more additional memory per vCPU than R4. So R5, 5% more additional memory than R4 in that way. So R5N, N as I already told you, stands for network. A actually is similar to the ones that we discussed earlier, like AMD EPYC 7000 series and X1, X1E. X stands for extreme, E stands for enterprise applications. You need to remember it that way. And Z1D, here it's a bit uh, tricky to remember. So you must remember that it has 4.0 gigahertz. The Z you can take from the uh, gigahertz and up to 1.8 terabyte. So one you can take from the 1.8 terabyte of instant storage combination of dedicated hardware. So, so Z1D is uh, 4.0 gigahertz, 1.8 terabyte 
combination of dedicated hardware and lightweight hypervisor now the next thing is accelerated computing accelerated computing instances uses hardware accelerator or coprocess to perform functions graphic processing or data pattern matching so it is like here so it has p3 and p2 p stands for performance remember that p for performance so you must remember that the instance type which is inf1 is basically leaning towards to support machine learning inference application inference inf inference and uh, g3 g4 g stands for graphic intensive so both of them are graphic intensive uh, instances and f1 this is one of the new ones that we have here f1 basically stands for field programmable gate arrays or fpgas Pro field programmable gate arrays are basically these type of arrays which after manufacturing also you can uh, program them for your needs the next one or the last one that we have here i suppose it's the storage optimized so whenever you think of i remember that it would stand for io or iops input output per second and when you see en en basically stands for enhanced networking and the next one that you have is d2 d2 you must remember that d2 and h1 both deal with hard disk drives but d2 has disk and data warehousing it is used mostly for data warehousing so 2d's hard disk drives and data warehousing so 2d's remember it has d2 and h1 that you have hard disk drives but high disk throughput both of them uses high disk drives uh, which have like 48 terabytes and 16 terabytes respectively for d2 and h1 but the major differences that you would find is d2 is used for uh, data warehousing and h1 is used for high disk throughput so the next topic that we have is the aws security groups welcome to aws security the last topic before we jump into the aws uh, ec2 demo and the hands-on so what are aws security groups so aws security actually acts as a virtual firewall for your instance to control inbound and outbound traffic so what does inbound and outbound traffic mean so inbound points to the incoming traffic or the request that comes into the host and the outbound uh, actually points to the outgoing traffic which basically is the traffic that are going from the host machine to the outside world so let's suppose we have our user which is trying to connect to aws instance as i mentioned and uh, as i mentioned security group is like a virtual firewall and we can configure the rule as per our requirement in our security group so by adding a policy to it uh, so if i add an inbound filter for ip in the range 192.168.3.x and allow port 22 it means that any user within the ip range can ssh to the ec2 instance so i guess our user which has the authorized port access 22 and is within the range of the ip address that we have allowed so it, it is under that ip range so he's able to ssh to the instance but having said that if there is a user who isn't in the filter criteria it will not be able to access to the machine so interesting thing is by default all the outbound traffic is allowed by the ec2 instance and it can connect to the outside world freely without any restriction until and unless you specifically add a rule to what it can access and what it is actually allowed to so there are a few points that we need to remember for the solution architect exam so the first thing that you have is you specify allow rules and not deny rules which means you set rules or policies for what you allow to the user to access and not the things that you want to restrict so the next thing that you have here is you can specify separate rules for inbound and outbound traffic when you create a security group it has no inbound rules which means until and unless you add a rule to the security group there is no means to access the machine next is what i have already mentioned by default a security group includes an outbound rule that allows all outbound traffic uh, and when you create a security group you must provide it with a name and a description so that you know what it is actually meant for so finally we have all the basic knowledge that we need to proceed on the hands-on for the demo for ec2 so let's jump right in hello everyone and welcome to the aws management console here so what we are going to do is we are going to type the service name i would request you to type it as well so type ec2 and we'll go into the ec2 management console so currently uh, you are using the following amazon ec2 resources in asia pacific mumbai region so it's close to me so i've used it uh, so you can use wherever it's close to you the region actually which is close to you so currently we have no running instances no dedicated hosts no volumes nothing it's just zero 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 by default there is a security group that i told you uh, but we can actually create an instance isn't it so we will do that so so you can see the launch instance uh, button here so you can just click on this to launch an instance so i'll click launch instance now 
this is pretty exciting isn't it so the latest version of amazon linux uh, ami is the amazon linux 2 that's actually available for free tier so you must remember all the options that you see here should only be free tier eligible so if you want you can just click on this one you can click on the checkbox here free tier only and you can use this otherwise if you are going to use something that is not free tier eligible then you are going to pay a lot of money based on the usage that you have so be sure that you are clicking on something or and you're using something that is free tier eligible and if you don't want to you can just go through this video tutorial and you can learn what and how it happens so i'll go ahead and choose the i'll choose the amazon linux 2 ami and uh, i want a x86 uh, 64 bit so this is the latest version of amazon linux 2 and uh, we would go through this tutorial with this ami itself so please make sure that you use the same so that you don't have to change any of the commands uh, if you're using any older version of the linux ami click on this so now you have the t2 micro i told you the t2 micro or the t2 micro instance is basically used for the free tier eligible account so you have one gb of memory it has one cpu it is only elastic block store and low to moderate performance of network and yeah we have everything in place the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure the instance details with the free tier you will get as minimal as possible but it will help us actually understand how it works so it is more than enough for us okay so you have number of instances one i don't want to request any spot instances so i am not checking on this i will select the default vpc now because i have not created a vpc as yet so but i can choose uh, any of the availability zones i told you that there can be multiple availability zones within the region click on no preference it will go and select the default subnet so there are options available here for you to choose the behavior on which uh, the shutdown actually takes place so either you can stop the uh, instance or you can terminate it uh, and you can basically have a enable terminate protection which basically protects you from accidental termination and you can uh, enable the cloud watch as well which gives you the detailed analysis of what you have been doing on the particular instance so i'll just click on add storage add tags so we can basically add a tag so first tag that is really important is the name tag so i will add it as uh, pi first instance so i have added a name and the value is first instance so i can denote this instance value or the instance name as first instance when i see this first instance in the name of the instance list i can identify that this is the instance that i had created the first time the next moving on is creating the security group so i had already told you by default there will be all the outgoing traffic will be allowed so if suppose i want to create it i can give it a name security group name as so i've given it a name and that's it once you have given the name you can just review and launch you can just review all the things that you have so once you have done all the things that you need to launch the instance you can click on launch and choose an existing key pair or you can create a new key pair i'll create a new key pair so key pair name will be remember this this is very important for you to connect to the instance so make sure you don't misplace it and keep it handy because we'll be using it to connect to this instance so i've already downloaded it so this is basically the sh key that you're going to use to sh to this particular instance so okay just we are done with everything now we'll just click on launch instance yes everything is done we have our instance launched and that's it we'll click on this we have the instance list here and we'll wait for a moment for it to pop up in the instance list so yes it is running our first instance guys we have successfully created a instance in our aws free tier account this is epic i hope you guys have also created a new one and please share your views in the comment section below that how you felt by creating it it was an awesome fulfilling session today we learned a lot about amazon ec2 in the next chapter i will show you how you can connect to your amazon ews ec2 instance with ssh over windows and mac and we will do a deep dive onto the other tools and ways we can connect to the machine and we'll also look into the security groups in depth if you like the video please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already please share your comments below and until next time signing off